Good morning, folks. Today we're going to see key confirmations of the science we've been observing on the frontier, including one of the most important and in which can be taken no solace. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star continuing two prominent features, the southern coronal hole system and the bright points on the north which indicate the 11-year sunspot cycle is ramping up again slowly. The solar wind at Earth has varied between calm and moderate intensity streams for the last three days. We're at the higher end of the normal quiet range, so we're at the higher end of quiet condition geomagnetism. We have been watching filaments lift and partially escape on the northeastern limb, a few of them in the last few days. And these filament releases are producing minor coronal mass ejections, CMEs, out about 90 degrees away from Earth in the solar system. This is the SOHO satellite, and it looks from the same line of sight as Earth. Top quake of the last day hit Croatia. The shallow rumble took its toll on old infrastructure and anything that happened to be on the street below. We do know at least one person has died, and for the second time this week after Moroni's trumpet fell atop the church in the Utah quake, we see another top tier tumble off the tip of the tribute. Meanwhile, they don't really get many earthquakes in Georgia, but if you'd like to go have a chat with them about it, you're going to need a boat in some southeast parts of the state. The Altamaha River is expected to crest feet higher this week and break its record marks, but as you can see on the river stage map, it's not just coastal Georgia underwater, and it's not just them at major flood risk from high rivers. It is setting up to be an excessively wet spring for the Great Lakes and upper Midwest, and with the current setup, we have considerable risk of major flooding with widespread moderate risk that will be just one strong storm away from making it not seem so moderate. Folks, this is pretty cool. The jet like Steve Aurora, which we know isn't really Aurora, is now being better characterized and I'm wondering how many climate scientists are paying attention to space and plasma physics these days. Because the explanation here is that invisible plasma flows, which is a masterful means of saying electric and ionic current, begin exotic photochemical processes in the nitrogen and oxygen. And it's not hard to envision the pathways and perpendicular fields and flows to known magnetic and plasma setups on the planet today. Even if you knew the exact spot where an L-shell field entered the surface, you would still be able to look straight up and see those fields and currents running high above your head in the larger systems connected to higher latitudes. We know that seismologists are paying attention to stuff like this because the field has already shifted to that of the electroquake. Persistent ionospheric anomalies since the 2011 magnitude 9 earthquake in Japan indicate this earthquake wasn't just a short-term release of stored potential, but it may be a new connection to the deep. The mega crystals plunging deep into the mantle there may have gained a conductive pathway to the surface after the ground moved, and Japan may have newly joined a number of other locations around the world that are tremendously magnetic or energetic. Now let's get a quick mental breather out here at NGC 4237 from Hubble. This is known as a flocculent spiral galaxy, which is a name given when the spirals can be detected moving outward, but when it's very difficult to really pick out one spiral versus another, almost as though its density nodes amidst a larger coherent sheet of material, kind of like the solar wind current sheet in Parker instability. Sure is pretty. We've got the first of two solar climate forcing confirmations today. In what I can tell was a brutal analysis that did not need to be, they were able to parse out considerable effects of solar forcing on the troposphere and stratosphere. The absurd thing is what can even be inferred from the title. They used irradiance, wave energy only. Two of these authors work for NASA, and why they stick with waves while refusing to make their lives easier with the particle forcing datasets is beyond my comprehension. So I won't try and we'll move on. The solar cycle and short-term space weather events modulate global thunderstorms. Both involve only that particle forcing, and the full body of peer-reviewed literature suggests solar energetic protons, Earth electrons from the Van Allen belts, and cosmic ray atomic nuclei are all able to modulate lightning are all modulated by space weather processes, and for those wondering why the article is dated May 2020, it is an online preprint. The issue of that journal where the article will be found will go into actual print in May. And oh my, look at that, we're back to Parker instabilities, Parker spirals, and their waving and rippling effects. How'd that happen? We're looking at explaining the galactic current sheet character as being that Parker instability, plus some molding and sculpting by cosmic rays and that accounts for just about all of it. One of its cited works, by the way, was one I hadn't seen before, and I'd like to show you some of the images from it. Simple but epically informative graphics about the galactic plane and the alternating magnetic fields that make it a plasma tsunami carrying dust and gas 
and delivering the magnetic reversal of the galactic field. If you are new here, the Sun's rippling current sheet does this to Earth, passes Earth every two weeks, and we get the phi angle shift in the solar wind and some global electromagnetic effects. The best we can tell is such a sheet would pass the Sun every 10 to 15,000 years, and then we get to find out what an electromagnetic disruption inflicted upon the Sun looks like. If you would like to know what the science, history, and the evidence says will happen, and when, Find the links and extra info in the description box below the video. Those cosmic disaster links are important, seriously. They explain more than you'd ever imagine walking into them for the first time, and we're on deck to try it again. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.